Yeah. Going live. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. 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 Just, to, just to know that last week I read you the wrong monthly Bible verse. Yeah, sure. Next month instead of this month. So you're going to start with that? Huh? I'll start with that. You guys, you guys all know this one here, John 11 25. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, like everyone else. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which that is, but page 104. Yeah, page 104. Recognition of civil government. There it is. Okay. All right, everybody, ready? Keep an eye on the chat too. Hmm. All right. In Romans 13, 6, Paul once again referred to government authorities as God's ministers. However, the original word used here is different from the one in verse 4. <clears throat> here it is the word that was used of the priests in their temple ministry. Civil rulers are ministers of God's service. The very thing of verse 6 must refer to the taxes continually needs no explanation how regularly and swiftly the deadline for tax payments roll around. Someone read Romans 13, verse 7. <clears throat> Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. All right, question 7 is, what exceptions, if any, are listed in this verse? Okay, read it again. Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Who's not listed? And the question fear. is, what exceptions, if any, are listed in this verse? Fear. No, what exceptions? Fear's there. It, love is not there. Oh. Service? Like making meals? Or? Yeah, that's not listed. Well, not really an exemption. <clears throat> Well, the answer I've got here is there are no exceptions. You have to honor all of them. You know, the civil government. You know, you got to pay taxes. You got to pay taxes. Like y'all were praying. Customs to whom customs. Fear and honor. It's a trick question. It kind of was. <laughs> Verse 7 summarizes and itemizes the subject. Render to all their, that is, discharge your obligations in relation to the state and civil authorities. This statement, or this set, settlement, involves tribute to whom tribute is due, income taxes, personal taxes, property taxes, all of them. Custom to whom custom corresponds with our Payments on goods such as a sales tax or customs payments. Fear to whom fear expresses the feeling we should have towards highest officials. Veneration and respect. Honor to whom honor has much the same meaning. Certainly, it indicates respect due all government authorities. Now, you want me to display this number 13 resource? It's basically. You know, being on armor of light, got a picture of a suit of armor. I don't think you guys can see it back there, so we'll pass it all along. And wish I had made copies of all that, but limited paper. <laughs> yeah, it's not necessary. For it's not necessary. We can just pass it around and show it. That's right. And it says, okay, now, this next one here. Oh, Summarize what should characterize our actions and attitudes when we put on the armor of light in relation to our government. <laughs> Says either record or reveal the answers. Anybody have any of the answer? Um, I have a good friend in Waterford that he he's not on the Waterford uh, board or anything but he sort of watches over that and gives counsel to 
um, people that are on there. And he, like, for example, I didn't even know about it, but there were like three um, parlors on Dixie Highway, and they call them um, like therapy places. But all of the uh, people there were from Vietnam, and uh, he he was successfully able to get rid of them. And um, well, those kind of massage parlors. <laughs> yeah, that, but there's another place that's bad further down. You can see uh, by the resale shop by the one down there, almost so you get to that Chinese buffet that's in Andersonville. Oh, There's okay. a store on the left I'd like to see get out of there, too. But he'll probably do that. He does a lot for Waterford, but he doesn't want to be on the board because it's too much work because he, he got a regular yeah. job. He's, well, maybe he's, you can make a recommendation to him. Well, it's uh, Mark, you know, the veterinarian that I used to work for. And he's busy all the time. Yeah. You can maybe let him know that that place is there. Maybe he's not aware of it. Oh, yeah, he is. He is. Well, all right, anybody have anything on this to uh, summarize what could characterize our actions and attitude? We put the armor of light, put on the armor of light in relation to our government. Anybody have anything else? No, nothing. Well, the answer in the book here is we should obey government laws, submit to government leaders, seek to have a good standing with the government, of course, pay our taxes, and honor government leaders. I think we kind of touched on this one a week or so ago, where instead of bad mouthing the government leaders or what they do, we should be praying for them and That was the last week's message from Pastor John. The barking yeah, we, the squirrels. <laughs> we, can, we kind of mix up his uh, messages too. We get into them and then he gets into them. Yeah. And one way or another, somewhere he... He gets us. Yeah. You know, in a way, that's a good thing for his message. To back up ours. To yeah. Whatever we study. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's getting to be so commonplace now that uh, we... We still, sometimes I think about it, you know, it's kind of like amazing how <clears throat> somewhere the two are tied, get tied to God, God ties them together. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and it just shows that that's the direction that He wants us to go. That's he, right. want, he wants us to get it. That's right. <laughs> All right. Next thing we got is a timely motivation. Uh, okay. This is uh, in thir Romans 13, verses 8 through 14. While believers have an obligation to submit to governmental authority, they must never lose sight of their true residence, heaven. They must never forget that Jesus Christ will return in the clouds to take believers home with him. That's referencing 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17. In Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14, Paul discussed the Lord's return and the, re and the effect of this promise on believers' daily living. For us, it should be a motiva motivation for grace living, particularly in relation to our neighbors. Knowing the time. Uh, could someone read verses 11 and 12? <clears throat> And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand, therefore let us cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Paul used two statements to describe the return of the Lord. In verse 11, he proclaimed, now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. In the first part of verse 12, he wrote, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Salvation is past, present, and future. We were saved, past, 
the moment we turn to Christ in faith. We are now be, being kept present as we proceed through this earthly life. Our salvation will be completed future when we are caught up to be with Christ and are made fully like him. That's referencing verse 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Let's go ahead and read that verse. First Corinthians fifteen forty nine. Everybody got it. Again, this is representing that part there. That we are we caught up with Christ and made fully like Him. Anybody got it? If not, I'll read it. If not, I'll read it. 1529 or 1549? 1 Corinthians 1549. Oh, 49? Yeah. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, that's Adam, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man, which is Christ. In this sense, salvation is nearer today than when we believe. Romans 1311 states, that we are to know the time, meaning we should know that Christ's return is soon and that we should order our lives accordingly. The second statement used to describe the Lord's return, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Seems strange when we realize that it has been at hand for 2,000 years now. However, we must understand the sense in which Paul used the word night. The apostles understood that the present age, the period from their day until the immediate days before the Lord returns, is the final one. In that sense, the night of the darkness of sin is far spent. It is almost over. Day is at hand. What we know about the days being at hand, that is, about Christ coming for believers, is that Christ will come for us before the tribulation. This text supports this position. For if believers had to endure the coming tribulation period, it would be difficult to say the night is far spent, the day is at hand. <clears throat> All right, question nine. How does the approach of return of Christ affect your day-to-day -day life? A uh, personal question, I guess. Uh -huh. Well, I was telling uh, Rhonda, my neighbor, who's also my helper at uh, Donaldson Hills, along with uh, Carol Stevenson from Woodside, and I was telling her that I just felt this urgency to, you know, I haven't felt felt well in probably the last three or four years, but I seem to have the energy to do these good news clubs and five-day clubs and and Jerry seems to know what I can do. It's nice to have a boss that knows what you can do. And she only she only asks you to do what she knows you can do. So it's been really good. And as it, I always say, so you guys are probably sick of hearing it, I'm in my 18th year there. And we were able to count the COVID year because uh, we had one session and the next day they locked, they closed the school. You know, so we got to count that year. So God has been very good to us. Very, very good to us. Given us two wonderful principals and the Anne there now, she sponsored by Woodside. And they give the kids all kinds of school supplies at the beginning of the year and the teachers too. And it's a poor school and they send all the troubled children from all the Waterford elementaries. They send them to Donaldson, and uh, and we're lear we're learning how to to you know. I don't think any of us have had any children in our family like that, and uh, we're learning to teach them. It's a whole new ball game, <laughs> and they'll say to us. Well, Jordan said to me last week. She said, uh, right, and then they'll just interrupt you, you know, and they'll say. Well, uh, this and this, and I said, now you have to raise your hand. And she says, well, this is what we do in class. I said, Jordan, Good News Club is nothing like school. You know, it's totally different. The rules are different, you know. So they're learning and we're learning, you know. Sometimes uh, my two helpers 
kind of have to tone me down, you know. <laughs> Because if you're up there and you've got a thought you want to teach on, and they're just all talking, you know, and it's just no. well, not being able to hear very well, it's like a bunch of bumblebees, you know, buzzing around my head. <laughs> and I can't hear any of them. <laughs> but it's been good, and we've had, this semester we had another young lady saved. It's awesome. Yeah. And we had yeah. four last fall. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, we should be living our lives as if Christ is coming today because we know that you know, looking at the signs of the times that's going on around us, and it's pretty much like the days of Noah, Sodom, oh, and Gomorrah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. that's how close we are to the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. God's going to have that, to apologize to them. Yeah. Even the yeah, commercial. Yeah. Even God that, said that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, God said he'd have to apologize yeah. to them if he, Didn't take I forget care of how it goes, but, yeah. but if Shorty, he doesn't come soon enough. <laughs> yeah, Shorty and I have been starting out every day with, uh, this is the day the Lord has made, mm -hmm. and we say that to each other. Mm -hmm. I start it, or he starts it, and we say it back and forth, mm -hmm. and it's, 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 it's good. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a comment on that uh, question? I know it's, you know, even though we need to live our life each day for Christ, you know, to know the days are, day is coming for his return, and the days are evil. Sometimes we fall short each, on, on certain days, don't we? Yeah. We kind of get busy with life here on earth and we forget about future, our life, you know, in Christ and what we should be doing for him. And we just, it's easy to let the things this world creep in, you know, say you sit down, you intentionally, you know, I, was, I won't watch, watch TV or turn it on and then something comes up or you tend to forget that you should be spending time in God's word. And I'm not saying you, I mean, we're all probably guilty of that. We sometimes don't spend enough time with God, really. Back before television or radio, there wasn't much to do, but if you had books or the Bible, you read. You spend time with, if you read the Bible, you spend time with God and all that. But there's too many distractions that we need. We need to be aware of the, the distractions that pull us away. Mm -hmm. Kind of tend to put put them aside. And <clears throat> when you hear that still small voice that says, get into my word, I can speak to you. And if we don't, guess what we just did? Basically, just disobeying God, didn't we? Mm -hmm. He wants us to spend time with Him so He can show us His love, and He wants us to love Him in return, and, and then do what He asks us to do. Seize the opportunity. You know, if they're, they're nudged to take an opportunity to speak to somebody about Christ, you should be doing it. And he then, wants to bless you. Huh? He loves to bless us. Yeah. Yeah. Good. At work, at times I feel the urge, but then I feel like I'm going to get in trouble if I start talking to somebody, and so I just go about my business. Because I don't want, yeah, I don't want to get into trouble. So that, that, that kind of hits me too. To be in my mind, I could get in trouble for talking to somebody about something other than work. Yeah. Well, if you pray and you ask our Heavenly Father to allow His Holy Spirit to soften. Or to allow you to witness to somebody, the doorway gets open. The door, the door that, that, that he's opening up will be there. Because I had a job where I had employees that I was witnessing to. And I just happened to finish and turn around, and there was an administrator behind me, and he goes, Oh, there's many different ways. And I said, No, it's only through Jesus. <laughs> And so I walked on. Well, four years later, that administrator became my boss. Uh, and he made my life a living hell for eight years. Uh -huh. <laughs> the job. Yeah. He got you and back. He, he turned everybody against me, all my employees. And uh, yeah. I thought, okay, that's my lesson. But I make sure to pray every day. 
to ask our Heavenly Father to allow the Holy Spirit to open up the doorway. Right. And uh, sure enough, there's one or two incidences that you talk about either yeah. church or your, what you do on the weekend, you know, you tell them, I want to go to church. Da, da, da. Yeah. Oh, and what did the preacher talk about? And you <laughs> tell them. And yeah. So it's just a matter of praying. And our Heavenly Father knows. He yeah, knows who's going to listen and who's going to pay attention. Right. Because after the rapture, a lot more of these people that aren't listening now <laughs> they, are they, going to oh, be they, listening. They, 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 yeah. Uh, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, not thank you for that. It kind of reminds me. There's yeah, work there's a couple of people, guys that died of cancer that I actually felt a strong urge to talk to them. But I did. And there was also a time back when I was in my first tour in the army. Had the same thing. To just talk to him. I had I been to church. And he said, okay, I'll come. And it'd be like a Saturday afternoon or night. And he said, I'll be there. And I'd go to see him. And I'd go. But I should have talked to him about Christ before going to church. And I didn't. Well, they went out of a remote area for guard duty on post. And, uh, and bought a motor pool, a banded motor pool. Well, he ended up falling in the grease pit and broke his neck. So, you know, these, these people died without me telling them about Christ. Oh, he yeah. passed away. He fell down into the grease pit. He was in, he was dead. Yeah. He died instantly in the, in that grease pit. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's things like that that. But, but if our heavenly Father doesn't open up the doorway, yeah, that wasn't your time. But it still it still weighs on my mind, and there's mm -hmm. and that you know that they slipped through. Yeah. You know, I know exactly what you mean, Kevin. Years and years and years ago, I was at GM 33 years, but it must have been about 25 years before I retired. When I first few years I worked there, there was a lady that I worked with every once in a while downstairs, and we did graphic. We made prints of graphic drawings and everything and cut them and folded them for the engineers, and she printed them. And um, all of a sudden, she was terminal. She went in the hospital, mm -hmm. and she was terminal. And I knew her husband, too. And um, and the Lord really urged me to go see her. And I kept saying no. And I've always thought, when I get to heaven, Jesus is going to be holding her hand and say, well, she made it. You know, someone else <laughs> talked to her. But I prayed and prayed, but I didn't go. You know, and she would have loved that. It's just something that, you know, Satan. Yeah, that's I think his, what that's it is his that, name, you know. That there's a four letter word that starts with the letter F that Satan uses to keep us from witnessing fear. Mm -hmm. It's one of the his most famous the, tools. And, and I was, yeah, yeah, I didn't know the Bible yeah. real well, and I was scared. Yeah. But you know, that's one of the most famous tools that Christians know that Satan uses to keep us from witnessing and doing what Christ wants us to do. Mm -hmm. It's fear of the unknown, fear of being rejection, fear of being ridiculed, fear of being beaten up. But you know what you do? Everybody knows what Christ said about that, right? Mm -hmm. You will be persecuted. It, it will come. You live for me. Live, walk with me. Tell others about Christ. You're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get persecuted. You're going to probably get beat up or whatever. And you know, he said, he said, it, it'll, it'll come. Yeah, fear knocked at the door, and faith answered, and no one was there. Yeah. Yeah. And all we had to tell, he asked us to do, is just trust him. You know, by myself, I'm kind of un guilty. I'm guilty for that for letting fear take over. Mm -hmm. I think I at times we all have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the day to day life that we live, knowing Christ is returning, we need to get the word out. That should we should be as it as it says as a 
handout has on here, the armor of light. Basically, let Christ's light shine through us. Let's see, do we have time? Yeah, we got time for a little bit more. So, let's see. All right, the next one we have is living each day. The Lord's near or at hand return should motivate believers to love others. Wake up mentally and spiritually and walk honorably each day. Let's see, loving others, verses 8 through 10, chapter 13. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Backing up. Eight through ten. Yeah, verses eight through ten. Uh, chapter thirteen. Oh no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear wit false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this same, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Our obligation is to owe no man anything. This instruction does not mean we must pay cash for every purchase we make. It does not mean we should never engage in installment buying or credit programs. Primarily, this instruction means we should have no overdue bills. The verse does not emphasize owing someone. It emphasizes and disapproves of keeping on owing that person and not paying the debt. The statement also implies that believers should not be careless about financial responsibilities. Contracting debts with an attitude of indifference not really caring whether they are able to make, make payments. Okay, let's see. They ask us to read Romans 8 or 13 verse 8 again, but uh, we just read it. How much does your debt to love others shape the decisions you make every day? Well, you never think of love and debt in the same words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I try to pay my bills. Not try to pay my bills uh -huh. every thirty days. Yeah. So that I'm not charged that extra interest rate. Yeah. But the love of doing it is not there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to put a pretty stamp on a bill. Put a frowny face on it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so that does kind of throw you in a way because it says that. Um, They're not looking at the stamp anyway. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What's in, on the inside? Like you your hand clap. I don't have that problem. Good morning. <laughs> I don't have an answer to book here. Nope. Well, yeah. I wonder if, they're talking, wonder if they're talking about going to get your taxes done and you're not happy with them. And yet, like Sharon said, you yeah. put on this big frowny face. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> that reminds me of that one Pharisee that said about the, do we pay taxes or not? Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, you got a coin? Let me let me see it. Okay, who's this, whose image is on here? Mm -hmm. Caesar's. Render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> so, but they've taken away a lot of deductions from the uh, income taxes. Yeah, you they, can't deduct. And I heard the pastor last Sunday he says, you know, you can do, donate online this and that, and it's tax deductible. Well, they don't allow that anymore. Yeah, I believe they only stopped that a few years back. Mm -hmm. I've had my rent go from uh, uh, like from two hundred four to one ninety four to one eighty two and one ninety one in the last four months. 
And I have notified my Hays Corporation as to how they, they lowered the rent. Altogether now it's going to be $13 that, that they've lowered it. My rent is lower now than it was before. Yeah, and because they, they're bookkeeping, they are making mistakes in their own accounting as far as things go because like everybody in my building got notices because we had come up and they owed us money. And they wouldn't pay us the money. They they tell us, well, we have to use that for credit. And that's yeah. all, all that it was. They just didn't want to. Yeah, what they would do on your bill, they would take off so much of it for the bill. And that'd be the, yeah. This is rent. And this is where they are accountable for what they do. And if they're not doing their accounting job right, then hey, they need to get somebody in there that has a head on their shoulders and knows how to go through stuff like that and take care of it the right way. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't do that because they messed up so many times. That company that we have messed up so many times, it's ridiculous. And they're still there, and it's like, yeah. we, when are we going to go? <laughs> well, at least they rec recognize and admitted their no, mistakes. No, they so. don't never admit their mistakes. People, they don't, they do not. It's well, like, when they say they found it, just like error. when the boilers, the boilers, and we had to go without the water and all this other bunch of stuff because of them, and because they're not willing to fix up the building. They, I don't give them any excuses. They don't need excuses. <clears throat> All right, it's Kevin's turn to prep. Okay. <laughs> it is. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and close the prayer. Dearly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this lesson. And help us, Lord, to always be mindful that we should walk in your steps. Put on the armor of life. Let your light shine through us so that others may see you, Lord, for the day of your return is at hand. And Lord, we pray for these uh, prayer requests, Lord, for each one of them. Lord, you know each need. You know who needs healing, financial, whatever it may be, Lord. I pray, Lord, that, you're, that, that, that they will pray in faith and that, Lord, your will be done. As we leave and go into the service this morning, Lord, just be with us. We pray that your spirit should just touch each one of us and move among us and open our understanding a little bit more, Lord, so we know what your will is. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, it's it's hard, isn't it? Uh, we was, was we was, yourself. and Brian needs to come in and turn it off. Yeah. You're, are you going to keep the house? As far as I know, I can't afford to move anywhere else. With the yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the way I am. So you got to keep. How many more years have you got? Well, if I wanted to retire, I'd probably do it this year, but I'm not going to. I've got to try to get some money put together. i got the dead trees got to come off. And I had received an annuity from my mom. You know, split even between us four kids. Mm -hmm. I ended up using about almost a little over half of that for the cars. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's just, and I was hoping I'd be able to use it all to get a tree, get the tree out. Mm -hmm. but oh, trees I'm glad to so get people to come out, get, get quotes, and, and have them bring insurance and licensing and stuff like that. Just make sure that, my, that something happens. My house insurance won't pay for their stupidity. Yeah. 
Yeah. And if they don't show, if they show up, they don't have paperwork showing their insurance. You know, Muriel's Muriel Phillips' grandson John does trees. Who? Muriel Phillips' grandson John. He does trees. So let's see. This is a tree that's dead. And he he's good at it. And it's near it's between my house and the neighbor's house by side of our driveway. You, I don't know if you've ever been over in our house. I have. Well, Quite the middle, the middle elm tree that used to be the second one, now it's the middle one. That's the one that died off. And it shed you'd like you wouldn't believe. Is your neighbor gonna pay half? Or? Are you kidding? No. <laughs> Why would he? Not I even on his property. Yeah, you know, some what I would like to do is if I could have could have gone and got into a car and home insurance, mm -hmm. like for cars, include make you know major maintenance. Yeah. And for the houses, removal of dead trees. Yeah, I've got it on all. You know, I, if I was an insurance, insurance company, I'd rather spend two, three, four, five thousand dollars to remove a tree for a dead one. That breaks off. Mm -hmm. Or especially yep. if it's dead. Okay. You, you, you come out all right. And see there you go. Then to pay the a quarter of a million dollars for a house. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's dumb to be able to, to run an insurance company like that for house insurance to mm -hmm. not take out a dead tree before it falls over. Yeah. Yeah, I've got an all man my appliances, but I'm not on, on my trees. So. Right. But, you know, something like that would be beneficial for an insurance company to not mm -hmm. have to make them, you know, have to mm -hmm. pay for somebody to move out and go there somewhere else so the house is fixed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's dumb. Mm -hmm. Preventive, you know, preventive is much better than afterward. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, if you go someplace where you can't wait for your house. So 